Medical school has lots of content that you need to stay on top of, which you can easily do using this three-step process. Hi guys, my name is Liddy and I'm a UK-based medical student. I run this channel with my friend Hazal to document our lives to becoming doctors and also share student tips along the way. By the end of this video, you'll have a three-step process that will help you take control of your studies and also keep on top of it rather than your studies piling up on you and also consuming you. Let's break it down. As some of you already know, medical school can be quite intense with many deadlines and educational commitments. You can't always just go with the flow of things, you have to be quite intentional. Many of us have perhaps been stuck in a vicious cycle of work piling up, feeling overwhelmed, cramming and burnout, simply because the medical school work is never ending. I was definitely guilty of this as a first year medical student when I first started medical school and I had no idea what was going on. It is time that we take control of our study to stay on top of medical school rather than allowing all the deadlines and work to suffocate us. I personally like to break my day-to-day -day medical school routine that allows me to stay on top of things into three elements. Pre, during and post. Many medics that I've spoken to always say that the most challenging thing about medical school, the thing that makes medical school hard, is usually the volume of information that you have to know. There are lots of group-based discussions, anatomy sessions, physiology sessions, hospital placement days, practical clinical sessions and lectures of degree material that we have to consume in order to pass our exams and progress to becoming doctors. However, the time spent through these different mediums acquiring medical school knowledge can be very time consuming and we can't deny that this is one of the main things that can eat into your personal revision time or your study routine. Hence, the three-step process that I'll be teaching you guys will be based around degree material. Pre- during and post. The green material encapsulates all the different teaching methods and all the different sessions and educational commitments that you have as a medical student. This definitely looks different depending on your course structure, depending on which medical school you go to, depending on which year of medical school you're in, whether you're in preclinical years, whether you're in clinical years, whether you're abroad, it definitely won't look the same for everybody. However, refining these three sections for yourself as an individual will be in the best position to manage medical school and stay on top of it. It definitely helped me do this and I run a whole YouTube channel alongside medicine. These three things, pre, during, post and how you organise yourself will encapsulate your medical school study routine. Whether you like it or not, you have a medical school study routine. Whether you spend hours in the library studying or whether you're the type of person that barely studies and just goes with the flow and still manages to somehow pass their exams. It's completely up to you what you define as a medical school study routine. But the main thing is we all have one, whether it's non-existent or very much so existent. So it's really important to refine the different elements that make up the study routine to put you in the best position possible to stay on top of things. Let's get straight into it and start by discussing what to do before degree material consumption. I think that this is probably one of the most important elements out of the three for your medical school study routine in allowing you to stay on top of things. Let's look at pre-lectures and how we may want to organise ourselves in order to keep on top of things. One thing many people suggest is downloading your lecture slides and having a little look before the actual lecture to try and get a bit of an understanding of the topic before the lecture actually begins. If you download the PowerPoint slides or the PDF before the actual lecture begins, that is your opportunity to look at any jargon or any terms that you may not be familiar with and you may want to jot the definition of. You can also do some external reading on the topic and if you want, take it a step further and even write a list of questions that you may want answered during the lecture or questions that you may want to ask the lecturer following the lecture or during the lecture. This has the potential to save you lots of time during the actual lecture and having this initial overview of which lectures are coming up will allow you to be aware and present with upcoming sessions that you may need to attend so that nothing catches you by surprise. I just want to note however that while going through lectures beforehand is a great idea and works for many people, it personally didn't work for me. In my first year of medical school when I was really stressed about what my medical school study routine would look like, a lot of people suggested that I take a look at the lecture slides beforehand. 
for me this will take up a lot of time in the mornings that I just didn't have and I would rather spend my time commuting to university, getting mentally prepared, being well rested rather than trying to consume and memorise a bunch of jargon I've never seen before. Moreover, despite looking at the lecture slides, a lot of the time I still wouldn't understand what was going on until it was actually taught by the lecturer. And the main thing that I want you to take away from this is give it a go. But at the same time, trial and error is super important to figure out what works for you, what doesn't, and then you can make the appropriate changes when necessary. In saying this, one thing that I actually do before my degree or class material consumption is have an overview of what to expect, whether this is via a weekly planner or even a schedule that I made. This could be by writing down a detailed plan or by referring to my weekly schedule. I find that as students, sometimes we tend to just cruise along and instead of creating a personalised study routine, we may rely on university timetables that tend to be quite vague. However, organising my modules or my monthly schedule via Notion means that I can schedule my time better. On a weekly basis, usually on Sundays before the week begins, I look at upcoming deadlines and assignments, how many lectures I may have that week, how many days I may be doing hospital placement, practical sessions I may have, etc. And so the free time that I do have, I can then allocate it to extracurricular activities or personal time to study. Knowing that going through lecture material is definitely one of the most consuming parts of the week for me, I may download and organise the lecture slides in preparation for the specific day in which I may have that lecture. Or if this is a week where I'm heavily making flashcards in a passive way, I might split it with Hazel to really facilitate my workflow and how much I'm able to get done at a given time. If it's a week where I have hospital placement, for example, I may make a list of different tasks and activities I want to attempt on each day. This will invite more structure into my medical school activities. So having this visibility of my upcoming week and putting certain things in place, whether it's lectures I'm doing or flashcards or even hospital placement, allows me to mitigate against the possibility of becoming overwhelmed with work or missing deadlines. This is because I have intentionally and actively arranged my time to be able to meet academic commitments. From experience, adding this to your overall medical school study routine will definitely definitely help with keeping you on top of all of your tasks. Next up is during. During refers to the part of your medical school study routine where you actually consume and acquire medical school content. I'll be using lectures as an example once again because while medical school courses may differ from university to university, from country to country, I feel as though a majority of us will definitely have lectures as common ground. During my lectures, I make my notes. And there are many ways that you can do this. If the lecture is in person, you can download the lecture slides and annotate directly onto them, or you may prefer to make notes on Word documents. Since these lectures are live and the lecture might be going quite quickly, it can be difficult to jot down every single thing. So in this scenario, I tend to make very brief notes. If the lecture is virtual or pre-recorded, I have the ability to pause the lecture and make more detailed notes on the topic being taught. My notes during the live lecture tend to be messy as I'm writing at the speed of the lecturer, whereas the notes that I make when I'm watching a virtual or a recorded lecture is definitely more neat, concise and well put together. But it does tend to take a lot more time. It is by trial and error that you'll be able to discover the best way for you to record lecture material that you can later advice from. Since I've started medical school, I have probably tried every note-taking method in the book, but making notes on my iPad using Notability seems to be what is working for me, so I'm just going to run with it. Try your best not to get distracted doing online shopping, but instead listen wisely and get the work done then and there so that it doesn't have to eat into your personal time later on. I also know people who don't actually make notes and they instead use lecture time to make revision material, such as typing up flashcards relevant to the topic that the lecturer is teaching. This is not just killing two birds with one stone but it does save a lot of time post lecture freeing up more time that you can then invest into other elements of your studies. With other lecture material mediums that you may have whether it's anatomy sessions, physiology sessions or hospital placement days the advice is the same. Try your best to be attentive during this time. It can be quite tiring, but you want to make the most out of them during the allocated time. So try your best to consume the relevant information so that you don't have to spend your own personal time catching up later on. In first year, I remember I used to find it so difficult to stay concentrated during certain anatomy sessions that we would have. 
So what I would then have to do is allocate one hour after the anatomy session to catch up on all the different things that I missed out on during the allocated session. This is a huge waste of time. This strongly echoes my previous point about being intentional with timetable time and allocations because it greatly influences our ability to be able to stay on top of medical school. The next session is after. After class material consumption. first thing that comes to mind with this is organisation. Whether it's a problem-based learning group session or a lecture or a physiology lab that you just attended, if you are taking notes, if you're consuming information, it is so important to store and file them away immediately after the session. When your notes are everywhere and aren't kept in a neat, clear way, it is so easy for you to lose them, to clutter them. This will make things much more difficult for you downstream when you actually need those notes to study from. You may find yourself re writing notes or even studying incorrect material for exams and this is never a good thing. On top of this, putting organisation to the side, if you have sessions or work that you need to catch up on or you need to complete that you didn't get to do during the allocated time, do not let it build up. Try and finish it, try and get rid of it then and there as soon as possible. As the assignments pile up, as the deadlines pile up, the difficulty of completing the task also rises. And this is what we do not want. The more time you spend fumbling about and trying to organise things, Things that could have been dealt with months ago is the more you eat into time that could have been spent consuming new class material or even meeting new deadlines. Something else that you may want to consider doing after degree material consumption is active recall. This is definitely another thing that I like to do post lectures. The main method of active recall that I like to practice the most is flashcards. I make flashcards on the key information from lectures and other sessions that I may have and I tend to do this on Quizlet. There are definitely other apps that you can use like Anki. Making flashcards means that when it comes to revising for an exam I don't have to go back and look at every single note that I have made. That is so time consuming. I can instead quiz myself using an effective method to retain information. I make notes first and then flashcards later because making notes allows me to condense information in a format and a way where I can easily understand it. And I make sure that I condense key information that I can then easily convert into flashcards. My notes are a summary of that lecture or that topic in my own words. And this is what will help me understand the content better. However, doing flashcards later on really reinforces this knowledge and really helps me remember it. You can skip the note-taking process completely and jump straight into flashcards if this is something that works for you. Using active learning methods like flashcards rather than passive learning techniques allows me to learn medical school material more effectively. Flashcards are not the only methods out there for you to active recall but if you do want to do active learning it is important that you implement it into your medical school study routine. The last thing you want to do is just make notes and leave it collect dust onto exam season because during revision what could happen is that you could end up facing a great level of difficulty when it comes to deriving key components of your curriculum and it is not just about going through these flashcards regularly it's also about going through these flashcards in an effective efficient way i always ask myself how can i put myself in the best position possible to consume this information in the most efficient and productive way with minimum distractions this could be studying with a friend for accountability this could be studying studying at home, this could be studying at the library, this could be studying with or without music. It is completely up to you how you want to structure the way in which you revise but make sure that you take all these components into consideration. And don't forget as well in the after section that it is so important to create free time for yourself to have a healthy work-life balance. That also contributes to allowing you to stay on top of medical school. You simply cannot perform at your best if you are always burnt out and tired and just unable to consume information to the best of your abilities. Happiness, fulfillment, being well rested does play a role in your overall academic performance and how well you can stay on top of medical school. Research shows that unattainable all night study sessions lead to more anxiety, more tension and it impacts cognitive performance which could lead to poor results. Whereas positive emotions floods our brains with chemicals such as dopamine and serotonin which make us feel good, improve our memory as well as our ability to learn. You learn better, you are less likely to fall behind and become overwhelmed, you are more likely to keep on top of medical school, all of these things are interconnected. I want to emphasize that despite refining these three elements and your own three-step process, it is possible to feel overwhelmed at times. 
This is normal for any student. The main thing, however, is to reduce this so that it doesn't become a lifestyle or your personality. We want to make intentional efforts and decisions to mitigate against this. You can make small changes today in your overall medical school study routine that will bring significant changes in your ability to manage this intense course. If you want to learn about five different ways that you can active recall to aid you in not just staying on top of medical school but to also perform well, then be sure to check out my video that will be on screen right now. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and that you were able to take away a few things from it. Comment down below if you want to see more content like this and also be sure to subscribe. I'll be sure to see you for a new video next week. Bye!